What is up, folks? It is another week of the High Tech Podcast, and I regret emphasizing high that way. I gotta be honest. Uh, as soon as you said it, I was I like, oh. I really regret it. It's not okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're listening to the High Tech Podcast brought to you by Harness Tech. I am one of the hosts of the High Tech Podcast. Uh, if you're listening, my name is Josh Swartz. If you've listened before, you already know that. If you haven't, hi. Hello. That's it. Hi, Josh. Just, just saying hi. Also, we have another host, you know. <gasps> Um, we always say this in a weird way. It's either co-host or host, or one time I said one of the other hosts as if there was another one I was going to announce after you, yes, yes, but right. he is the great Will Illingworth. What's up, Will? What's up, my party people? I'm great, apparently. So, you know, just another day in paradise. Well, like, you're great as in a great person, a great co-host, a great friend, Aww. but you don't have to be happy. I'm not speaking for your emotions. You can be whatever you would like to be uh, today. Uh, it's totally okay. You know, I don't know. Just trying not to, you know, just clarifying. I'm not putting emotional pressure on you to Appreciate be great. This is, this is a safe space. Thank you. This is a safe Appreciate space. That. Yes. Yeah. The high tech podcast, AKA the safe podcast. Um, that's, okay. I don't know. <laughs> We're, we're working out some some kinks. Um, obviously, we don't have our branding document open. And Chris, if you're listening right now, I'm sorry. Uh, the yeah, Anyway, uh, another week of the High Tech Podcast. We are excited to jump in. If you are just joining our podcast, just a couple things, a uh, little, little spiel we like to do in the beginning here. Um, if you are not subscribed to the High Tech Podcast, make sure that you do. We are located in any podcast podcasting platform and also all over the socials the yep, social yep. media or as my grandmother calls it the facebooks um that's which great. i have a funny story all about of them second. are just so, my facebook yeah. uh, well um, that's probably not totally fair i don't actually know what she calls it entirely it was more of a generalized joke so yeah, if my grandma yeah. is listening um you know sign up anyway I got a story after I talk about the socials. Um, but uh, you can find us on social media, either at High Tech Podcast or at High Tech Pod. I'm not going to go through the whole spiel of which one is which where. Just look them up and you'll find us eventually. Yep. Um, and one of those, uh, there's lots of fun things posting. Chris, who we just referenced earlier, is our social media manager, um, who's going to be coming on the podcast at some point here soon. So you actually get to see him in the flesh, if you will. And during that day, I can say one of the co-hosts. Um, because oh. technically he's, he's more than a guest. He's kind of helping host that day. Can't wait. Um, yeah, we're, we're actually going to make, be we're on that episode. Him, <laughs> we're going to have to make him open the episode. That'll be like, the I love that idea. Yeah, yeah. Like he'll just like role play being the host. Exactly. He's got to feel what we feel I love every it. Tuesday night. I like that I idea. can't wait. <laughs> anyway, um, he's posting lots of great stuff on social media, so go check us out there. Um, just a reminder, if you would like to get in contact with us, if you want to be on the podcast, you want to tell us that we said something stupid or amazing, um, or you want to send us a funny joke from your day, whatever you would like to do, you can hit us up at inbox at hightechpod.us. That's one of the best ways to get a hold of us as a podcast. Uh, and then just a reminder, we have a website, hightechpod.us. Us and if I didn't say it already, which I did, I'm just gonna remind you again make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow us. It gets you uh more in contact with all the new content we're coming out with because we're posting more and more stuff uh, on our platforms, and it just helps us out. You know, if you listen to us, you know, and you don't subscribe, you know, it's kind of like you're just following Will and I around in the street, but never telling us who you are. You know, it's it's you're the just pod- a <laughs> it's the podcast version of stalking. Um, we and I now subscribers just, than stalkers. Yeah, I now just alienated a bunch of fans. Um, but on that note, yeah, it's fine. Make sure to subscribe, Thanks. check us out, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. Okay, fun story before we get into anything the socials thing reminded me of, okay? I will not say her full name because she's my grandmother and I didn't ask permission beforehand. But I did get an invite. Okay, have you ever gotten one of those invites on Facebook? from a family, an older family member, and you're not sure whether or not it's really them or somebody hacked their Facebook. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's a fine line. Like, like yep. I love my grand, my grandparents. I love them. Okay. But there's a fine line between what they post and what hackers post on people's social media. Like there's, it's, it's close. It's super close. Like I'm talking like the, the uh, photo post that they're like, if you don't like this, you hate Jesus. And it's actually a picture of Obi-Wan Kenobi, like that type of yes. stuff yes. on social media. Anyway, Okay, Sam and I recently got invites from my grandmother again on Facebook, even though we're friends with her. And it's her name, but with a Roman numeral two. So, like, if I was doing it, it would be like Josh two. 
And I can't figure out if it's somebody who hacked their account or if my grandmother couldn't figure out how to get back into her original account. So she created so she a, a two, new one, yep. like a second one. Yep. And I've been too scared. I've been too scared to ask. I've been kind of just waiting to see what happens. There's yeah. my, there's my fun I love story. That. That's, yeah. that's, you know, it's not quite a movie, uh movie sequel, but that's what she's trying to accomplish, yeah. you know, and it's just yeah. not going to land. Yeah. I kind of want to close down all my social media accounts now and come back as like Josh the second. Yes. You know, like, as if I like, this. I'm going to be so much better now. You just know? Start over. Like, yeah, just start over. Anyway. All right. That's a whole nother. That was a, that's not what we're here to talk about today on the high tech podcast. Um, though we should continue with our theme, Will, that we've done a couple times now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Will and I uh, have been working in a co-working space now together, some. Um, now today will be different because we were both not there very long together. Um, yep. Will kind of yep. was just there for a period in the morning and then peaced out to get lunch, which by the way, I did get Route 66, if you were curious, Ooh. and the rest of our listeners were. Um, it so uh, it was very good. It was, it was great. Yeah. Not better than Cavalier, but it's very good um it's it's fine. it's fine for those of you who don't live in lancaster and are listening to the podcast it's a great debate between two burger places in our city um and that's anyway fun fact so but will what's the funniest thing you heard today funniest thing i heard today i can't share it because it wasn't my conversation to share, but I do regularly overhear conversations um, where people are being less than agreeable. You know, <laughs> like let's just let's just put this in a hypothetical. Let's just say you've got a customer service associate, and the customer service associate wants to help you accomplish a task it's kind of in your best interest then to discuss this with the customer and, and maybe even follow the customer and like ask the customer service associate and, and, and you know, like engage instead, you know, it might, people might become combative or even just ignore what the customer And so that can, it can result in some very um, loopy conversations, like asking the same question, getting the same answer. Like if you're going to, if you're going to keep trying to ask the same question to a customer service associate and they're going to keep giving you the same answer, who's broken, right? The, the, the customer service person has to do their job. They're not going to change their tune. If you're going to keep asking the same question and expecting a different answer, just ask for the manager and move on. But uh, I, I, yeah, the, the, the actual inspiration for this was an overheard conversation where, the person on the other end of the line was just not, not getting it. And it was, to me, it was comical because it just kept going in these loops where the, the customer was asking for something and the customer service associate was just standing their ground and answering consistently three or four times in a row. And I'm like, this is getting old, but you know, maybe the person okay. thinks that they're going to get a different answer. So yeah. Yeah, the obscurity there does not make that a good story. No, frankly. that story. Yeah, I, I, you, you are a great friend. I, I love you, man. That, uh, that story is not a, not a party story. You know, like at and a then party, I found five dollars. Somebody asked for a story. Yeah, it's definitely not my grandmother created a her name the second Facebook. I'm just yeah. saying it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. It's, uh, it's tough when you can't tell the story. You know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't you just have gave us the government re redacted version of that customer. And, so, and so then the person bleep that who did it a bit bleep. Yeah, it, yeah. Bleep. That's, what we, that's what we got out of that. That's fine. We were we were not in the center area of the space. We didn't get quite as fun. Of, I didn't. It, yeah, whereas, this I didn't even hear much. Today. I was listening to a lot of music and trainings. You know, it was a funny moment for us. The funny moment for Josh and I in the co-working space was when one of the staff came over and like, oh, is the music playing? We're like, oh, no, yeah. uh, what music? She's like, oh, darn it. She pulls up her iPad and clicks a few things. And then music starts playing and she's like, oh, good. The speaker is working. And Josh and I are like looking around like, what's where's the speaker? No speaker. Like, and I was clearly right in front of it. I could tell by where the music was coming. <laughs> From like for all I know, there could have been a a minstrel in the wall, just like hammering away on a violin. You know, I I don't know. Yeah. 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 
but it was actually a cool speaker that was shaped like a painting. This is like a riveting conversation for people listening. I know right now if you're listening, you're like, man, this is this is why I dropped into the high tech podcast. I want to hear vague stories about customer service associates and stories and about black speakers. speaker paintings. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. The punchline, folks, is that the speaker looked like a piece of art, and neither of us yeah. knew it was a speaker. It's actually it was super cool. There. It is. Cool yeah, I, I like. Liked, I liked the concept. Anyway, that was fun. That was a fun divergence yep. into yep. whatever came out of Will and I's brain at that moment. But we'll for this really episode, we are here to close out our what we've been kind of calling our productivity series. Our, uh, I think, what really is the crux of the last five episodes has been about how to reduce anxiety in the world we're living in today, especially kind of the work world, the, the you know, um, education world, learning development world. We see a lot of anxiety between teachers, professionals, all that stuff. And Will and I have had some stuff that has helped us over the last couple of years that uh, we wanted to share and then work through live in this podcast. And so we've done that for the last couple episodes. Uh, I'm just pulling back fourth wall, transparency this episode was titled something very different until 17 minutes ago yeah. in case you were curious okay <laughs> so i have an exact counter notion is telling me it was actually 13 minutes ago sorry i read the comment too early there were a couple more comments uh, yeah, underneath there you it. Go. Uh, yep, yep. so um it was titled something very differently it was about uh what how to do things in notion specifically and like how to do stuff here's the deal. How to set up your central how to set up some of this yeah, yeah the central yeah. productivity system here's here's a couple things one we built a template for you to do it so we don't need to go through all the details two we're a podcast we're not a how-to video platform so we kind of decided we wanted to tweak that and three we actually uh, live did this with will in notion yep. about how to use the template how to set stuff up because we've shared a couple times in the series will's not actually done this himself and like a good friend, he came to me a couple months ago and uttered Hell. the words every friend wants to hear, which is show me how to use Notion. Um, <laughs> clearly, like that's so we had never done that yet. So we, we decided to do that live and kind of like a workshop kind of live walkthrough and what we were doing. Now, we've recorded that video. That's not actually gonna be the episode because it's a lot of us clicking around and doing stuff and Will and I talking back and forth about how to do things. And so we workshop. figured that would not be interesting for those of you in your car. Um, who already just heard a vague story about a service associate. So we figured that would be, sorry, it just fit. I had to, I had to leave it. It's fine. That. It's fine. <laughs> or a vague story about my grandmother. You don't actually know what her name is. So we've been not riveting. You yours, yours was still funnier and more relatable, uh, but it's fine. Um, anyway, so we figured that would not be the best thing to do. So what we are instead doing is we're actually uh, crossing my fingers. I'm going to say this in the episode. Yep. And then we'll may have to edit this out. So right now you may hear a, like it's just a blankness, you know, that's. <laughs> hey, could you talk really slow? So it's that's, easier for me to edit yeah, it, please. It says <laughs> nothing. What I'm going to yeah. do right now is I'm going to do a hand motion. It's going to go like this. I don't wow. know why I'm doing this, but Will, wow. that's the sign that I'm about this to say. This is a stellar episode. <laughs> that I'm about to say that uh, we're actually going to be trying to live stream that video uh, tonight. The night you're listening to this episode. There should be a live stream video coming from us uh, of us walking through this and Will and I being available uh, in Q&A for questions during that time. Okay, I'm going to do my hand motion again because that's now the end of that announcement so that if Will has to cut this um, when, I, when we don't <laughs> actually do it. <laughs> what? Cut what? I don't know what you're talking about. I, yeah, Nothing I don't know happened. what you're talking about. Okay, now, anyway, so this episode changed. Specifically, as you've seen in the title, what we want to talk about today is uh, prioritizing. So, yeah. I think maybe explain the title a little bit, um, which is kind of this concept of when you're doing everything, you're kind of you're doing nothing. Or the fastest way to to doing nothing is to try to do everything. Um, there's another common phrase for this, I think, Will. That's not what we titled it. I forget what it what exactly it is. Um, when I, oh, I know what it is. It's when everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. This is another like there version of what Will and I have. Seen. When everyone's special, no one's special, right? Like that. Yeah, that so, principle. Yeah, the, the principle. <laughs> Um, but in this case, I think it's very true, which is I've been on teams and on projects where everything's the most important thing we need to do. Here's the reality, though. When everything is a priority, everything is a five alarm fire. All of a sudden, like everybody's just used to everything being a five alarm fire. So nothing is important again. Right. Um, like it's you and you don't get stuff done. 
Like I, the the places I've seen teams get the least done is when they keep trying to do all the things, right? Like let me let me give a classic story and then we'll jump in and share some of maybe your experiences. I remember being in a tech prioritization meeting. This was a while ago. Whoever was involved is I I don't work with them anymore, so I can tell the story. Um, and uh, I remember being in this meeting. Okay, well, and the list of tech projects was like six pages long. It was oh. like 15 different initiatives that needed to be done. All of them were like giant projects that were going to involve like multiple offices at the institution. When I left in June, now that meeting happened probably a year and a half before I left. Yeah. When I left in June, I think one of those things was half done. All of the rest of them were tossed into the trash can. None of them got touched. Um, and the one thing that kind of got done was just because the other team had already started it already. It was a priority, but like the IT department had already started it. Like it was right. something that had already been on their, their radar before this meeting. All the rest of the stuff didn't get done. This is a common story I see happen over and over again, where when we prioritize and everything and we try to plan for seven years into the future of everything we're going to do in a priority, we end up either one or two things in my experience happens. You either get insanely overwhelmed or, uh, and then never do any of it. Or like none of that ends up realistically happening and something the next day becomes more important or yeah. nobody knows what to do. And so you work on different parts of each of those things and then none of them actually get completely done. Yeah. Is that your experience, Will, or am I just a crazy person and a curmudgeon? You are a crazy curmudgeon, but that's <laughs> why we love you. No, um, absolutely. I see it time and time again in my own work, my own field, of course. But this is actually all reminding me. I don't know if you remember this. I don't know if we, we share this experience or not. But the president of our college, uh, I would say it was probably in like a chapel or something when we were at college. I remember him saying something effect that um, kind of giving like the dictionary definition of the word priority is like you cannot have priorities. If you have a priority, it is the utmost importance. Something that is priority is at the top of the list. And to have priorities is to dilute the purpose of a priority. Like I, 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 this, as we were talking, I was like, this is all coming back to me. Like, holy smokes. I, I swear to God, it was our, the president of our college at the time. I don't remember the context, but that conversation really sits with me of like, I love language. I'm such a language nerd. So you start defining words, talking about etymology, blah, blah, blah. You've got, you've just got me, you know, Man, we're really waking um, people up in this episode. Yeah. Go, go ahead. <laughs> go to sleep. Um, <laughs> sun's getting real low, big guy. So. Um, some people got that. Some people did not. I just watched Deadpool two, and he says that to Juggernaut as he sticks oh, the knife yeah. in his helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds uh, real low, big guy. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that that's that that's a very you know like Josh, you're speaking to a very practical thing. I think many of us have experienced if we've worked in education, we've absolutely experienced something like that where there's competing priorities across numbers of teams usually tech related because we're trying to get more optimal experiences, more efficiency, more integrations, blah, 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 blah. But if we step outside of the practical for a moment, that philosophical point really stands. You know, a priority is something that is the utmost importance. It is the highest concern. And if you have priorities, while that can be true, you can have multiple things of the highest concern, but once you have priorities, you no longer have a priority. It, you, you can't, you, you know, oh. like, and that's where time becomes a very important thing when measuring your priorities, right? If we have five priorities, now the question is when, okay, if they all have to be done, the sequencing to accomplishing them is the next most important question. And that's why I like what we were playing around with, with titles for this episode and stuff like if you're trying to do nothing, try to do everything. You, The fastest way to spin your wheels, to stall a committee, to waste money. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> stall a committee. <laughs> That's what we should have right. titled this episode. The fastest way to stall a committee. 
title. I mean, we can still do it. It's still an option. Yeah. Um, right? Like I'm I I think that we it's pretty universal unless you have certain teams who go through the rigors who make the effort who to commit to the system to not do this this is the status quo ironically i like i think most people most teams most projects operate this way on the let's do as much as we can as quick as possible um, yeah. that's been my career experience, 10 years career, right? I, I, all my bosses in some level or another, all my teams, all the companies and stuff I've been in there, this, this is, this is the status quo. This is how people operate. Try to do as much as possible. Let's okay. get it all done. hundred percent. I, I see this. I've been thinking about this a lot in transition and looking at things differently and, and where things are at, like the common practice is very much that way. I've, how many times have we heard that? Like we have to get it as much done as possible and the level of pride. And, and I've had this too, that we take sometimes in being busy. Right. Um, right. Like, right. Like how many times, and you and I've done this plenty of times too. Will right. Like we're talking to somebody like, and they're like, how's your week going? And like, let, let's be honest with each other. How many times have we said to someone, Oh, it's been a crazy week. Yeah, I've been doing this, this, and that. And but inside, you're thinking like, "Yeah, I'm cool. Like, I'm important. Like, I like, you know what I mean? Like, like, how many times do we the say busier that? Busier we are, yeah, the more the busier important we, we are, are, the more important we are, or the more innovative we're being. Like, the more stuff we're doing, Ooh. the more innovative we're being. Right? Um, I think that's a common misconception in our world today that has led to a lot of like. And we're that we're going like company wide now at a certain standpoint this has led to a lot of like organizations falling apart and failing is because they've tried to do too many things at once and they have been bad at all of them. But like take this to a personal level. I think why it's so important we talk about priority prioritizing. And I would argue I get what, will what you're saying. Like if you have multiple priorities, you don't have a priority. I like to think of this as a pyramid. A little bit, not a pyramid scheme. That's something different. Um, nope. you know, no MLMs we're not here, selling, folks. Yep, we're not no selling oils, um, but we are. <laughs> oops. Um, Took a bad. shot there. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Chris, don't I, flip that. Uh, you know, it's, well, you know. Anyway, um, <laughs> the the what I mean by that is that at a certain level, prioritizing for me means you're picking what's the most important. And then you're picking what's the next most important, right. what's most important after that. And then here's what you don't do is you go, okay, self, how can I spend all the days doing all of those things? That's still not priority. You basically made that useless. Uh, yeah. You flattened it out and made it. what prioritizing is, is going, okay, number one, I'm going to do you until it is finished. Like right. it is, it is done. That is the most important thing. And then I'm going to move on to the next thing, right? Like a practical story about this that has always stuck with me. It's not a secret on this podcast that we're obsessed with a couple things. Notion, video games, right 37 now, signals. Deadpool 3, <laughs> and then 37 signals, okay? Um, if at any point somebody from 37 signals listens to this podcast, that would probably make Will and I's day. Like we are obsessed with them as a company. And part of it is because they have this philosophy of hyper-focusing on the most important thing. And um, if you're looking for another great podcast other than ours, you know, listen, listen to ours first, clearly. But I'm okay uh, if you – I'm okay. Go ahead. Leave us behind. Go to Rework. <laughs> Leave us to go I listen think. to Rework? Yeah, I mean, honestly, let's be real. Rework is a bigger is – it's a more intense podcast. But they have a podcast called Re the Rework Podcast. It's based off their book called Rework. And I always remember this story. They've told it a couple times in books and they've told it in the podcast, but I forget who, which person shares it. It's probably Jason Freed um, from 37 Signals, but shares a story about a friend who, and this is going to sound very familiar to a lot of us, especially to Will in probably a few months whenever remodeling in their house starts. Uh, they started a house remodel and he was sharing the story about his friend just came to him like, in a panic and i'm going to retell the story and butcher it a little bit so go listen to rework and they'll they'll tell the story fully yep. but basically the the gist of the story is he comes in in a panic because they it was supposed to be this small thing 
But then when they did this one thing, they're like, well, we can add more tile here. We can do more here. And so they started doing that. And it just became a house full of unfinished pro projects, right? Where like they would start something and then realize something else they could do. So they would get the contractor to start that while the contractor was also working, working on this and nothing was getting done. They were just adding more work to their plate. Yeah. And Jason shared the story that um, basically he comes to this friend and goes, okay, I'm going to help you figure out what we need to do. And he basically he tells him to back up. He says, forget everything else. What's the first thing that needs done? What's the most important thing, right? That's the question. What, if this is not done, what is going to hurt you the most? And I forget what it was. Let's just hypothetically say it was adding piping to make sure water doesn't go everywhere. I don't know. I don't really sounds remember good. what it was. That, sounds, that sounds like an important thing, but um, he tells him one thing and Jason says, okay, you're going to get just that one thing done. And when it is done, you move on to the next thing and you do that until you're finished, right? And he shares a story that it didn't take long for his friend to come back and share, like, things were just totally different at this point. Like, things were getting done. Why? Because they were focusing one at a time on what needed done and would move piece by piece from the most important to the next most important until everything was done, right? And they needed it done. That's how we need to work at the end of the day, all the stuff that Will and I have shared in this this series, quite frankly, means nothing if you if we don't do that, if we don't prioritize. My notion system that I've been sharing, para picking out, you know, pri prioritizing what areas are important to you in your life, what projects are important, all of that means nothing if you're not prioritizing. If we're hmm. not prioritizing, all you have, all I've done is give you a massive database of pages that will make your life worse. If you're not <laughs> prioritizing, like, like that's yeah. at the end of the day, that, that's the truth is pick the most important thing. Um, I think in our culture today, we, we sometimes fall at the, the, uh, well, I'm going to get like hyper religious for a second. I'm sorry. Uh, the, we sometimes fall at the altar of multitasking, which is not mm. a reality. Um, like we, we, we're not made to do that. We're made to focus in on things, especially when it comes to knowledge work and the stuff that a lot of times, like I think you and I do will, and those who listen to our podcast often are doing is you, you can't focus on multiple priorities at once. If you are, none of them is a priority and you're going to end up missing something in every single one of them. And you're not going to get something done. The people in my opinion who go, and I was this for a long time that go, I'm going to, Oh, this thing's super important. I'm going to fit finishing that course in between the 12 other meetings I have this week. Tell me how that went at the end of your week when you didn't start your week with prioritizing that this course has to get done this week and I'm going to make time for it. Um, yeah. That's, that's something from our world, but which, you know. which to Josh's credit folks makes him wonderfully annoying to get in touch with because he's <laughs> focused on <laughs> his tasks. It's not a complaint. I, mean I that love recently it. Right? Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not a complaint. Josh sets himself to a task. He's got his time blocks or boxes. He's got his commitments in place, right? And so he sticks to his guns and he gets his work done. And what I do like about what Josh does, and I've seen it time and time again, note I'm not using myself as an example. Um, Josh, <laughs> I am the chaos. <laughs> I am the chaos hand. <laughs> Um, in board games, 100%, you're the Chaos Hammer, you obnoxious <laughs> monster. <laughs> I play to lose. Um, I am Chaos. Anyways, distractions times 7,000. Like, when Josh is talking about getting this one priority done, the other thing, though, that you can take into account is that once you know your set of priorities, like the pyramid, Josh, I, I'm saying this because we've done this. Like, with Harness Tech, I see it in his work, in his day job, etc. Like, with the podcast... Josh sets that point at the speed of the spear, the point of the, the pyramid. We stick to it. We go for it. But he sets reasonable timelines and goals to accomplish those things. Well, sometimes. Most times. <laughs> in my experience, in our work together, yeah. I believe we've been fairly yeah. consistently reasonable. Um, maybe not one project, but that's fine. It didn't go through. Anyways, <laughs> um, once I'm trying to get to the point, man. I know. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm at the point, actually. <laughs> When Josh completes those tasks, he has space. He now has allotted space to do other things. 
I know this, right? Like he'll he'll have his hour and a half block, and if he has three things to do in that hour and a half block, and he gets the three things done in twenty minutes, it, it he did it faster than he expected. He uses the remaining seventy minutes to do other things, or to catch up on the next thing, or like like that's the opportunity that prioritization gives you. If you get the things done that are scheduled to be done when they're supposed to be done, you can start to work ahead on other things or start other projects. Like we've accomplished that. And that's one of those beautiful things of having the priorities aligned with time. I was, I think I said that early on in this conversation, like once we have the priorities set, it's just when. So, so getting the when in place and following it is the most important. It's, it's the most important um, way to deliver the priorities. The priorities themselves are the most important step in decision-making, but once they're set, it's about when you get them done so you can make sure that they're delivered. You know, setting priorities are great. If you don't do the work and it doesn't get delivered, it doesn't matter, right? The priority doesn't matter if the work doesn't get done. So setting those realistic timelines to accomplish the task and, and follow through on it um, is a beautiful thing that I think you, uh, it's a, it, I love that metaphor, that image you just shared with us, dude, the altar of multitasking, like, that's where priorities go to be sacrificed. That's where priorities go to die is the altar of multitasking. Well done. Golf clap. Oh, yeah. That's what, you know, a little bit of religious background will do to you to start. <laughs> Alters. Alter met metaphors. Or playing a video game where you have to sacrifice populations to, to, to win the game. That might have been last night. I don't know. There's a weird fine line between what happens in my life. And, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I really appreciate the um the the nice picture will's presenting <laughs> the um the space i don't do this doesn't happen perfectly in plenty of places sure. and there's plenty of times where prior the the the, the it's a double edged sword because i think the other side of it is you have to prioritize but you also have to be willing to adapt at times when priority needs to change. And that's maybe where I need to work on is, <clears throat> um, and I know I do. Cause when I went to get uh, certified in agile project management, that you to do like this test and they'll tell you what areas you're strongest in and weakest in. And uh, adaptive planning was my weakest score. <laughs> on the... <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, the... hey, like you're I good at making that plan, but adapting it. The exam. Okay. I was, it was, it was uh you're certified pmp for me it was still the place i needed to to work on um so we had to be careful not to over prioritize like for instance just this week i had a priority i wanted to get this course done that i was working on and, and one other thing that i needed to get done after that um but come wednesday i felt this need to map out will will knows context to map out the workflow for this development process design process i'm new in yep. the job i'm trying to figure out what the culture is how we're doing things and i felt like i didn't have enough of a hold on what the overall process has been laid out up to this point to, to contribute into a conversation I was going to have later on in the week. That's a priority. So I switched priorities that day and I focused a lot on this other thing. Um, that means I had to get the course done later. Um, but it, it was needed and I, and I don't regret switching that priority. It's identifying what's most important. Um, I think is the key. So how, what does this look like? I think we'll, there's a couple of things we want to talk about in how to do this, right? And one of the first things, just getting prepared. Like if you've never, you're adopting a system, you're doing whatever you're going to do. This is a part of my template in Notion that you'll see uh, later on tonight at the live stream, hopefully, um, will adopting and, and using. Um, but it's this thing called a mind sweep practice. And, and there's probably a bunch of different ways to do this. The way I've done this is... You basically look at your life and you ask yourself, what are the major areas of your life and what are projects that you're currently working on? This practice is not something you could do it on a regular basis, I guess, but it's the way I've used it is more intended to be something to kind of get started into a system and kind of just start to organize your life a bit in what you're looking at. And the whole point of this, I, I've had people look at me when I say about the whole organizing areas thing who just look at me and go, this is overkill. Like this is like my wife who I love would consider this overkill. Um, yeah. uh, uh, 100%, a uh, zero doubt. She's probably going to listen to this and I'll get yelled at later, but she knows I'm right. She would think this is overkill. Um, but here's why I think it's so important is that all of us have areas of our life, whether we realize it or not, all of us have 
spectrums of our life that we're involved in. Some of it's work, some of it's family that we're doing. Some of it, we have different roles we take on in our family, right? Like I manage finances. Will, that's not your role. You do other stuff in your, no, in no your finance. family unit, right? Like, so you have, right. we have different roles of what that looks like. And if we're not conscious of those areas and roles in our life, I, cause some people will kind of interchange that terminology areas where they'll think of it as like a role of sure. what you're doing. Right. If we don't identify those, how are we going to know to prioritize certain things to make sure we're attending to that area or role of our life? Right. Like how are we going to make sure that that's something we're caring for? Um, in our life. To me, this is just good stewardship of what we've been given and what we haven't. Like that's, that's to me, I don't know. Well, you're newer well, to this. We've been looking at this. What, what's your take? Well, I, I, I agree with you. And one of those areas where I see a uh, good justification for it, right. And I'm not to say that you're not justif justifying it well, but I consider some folks like if you have a, if you have a day job, right. And you are a yoga instructor on the weekends and you volunteer at the SPCA. I don't know. And you have a family and you like to go hiking, whatever. Like these are significantly different areas of your life and they're all going to take time. I I'm dealing with this a bit right now myself. Um, I'm, I do martial arts. I love my martial arts. I am preparing for a test. Uh, that test is taking a lot more energy before I even get to the test than I expected. Last night, I drove three hours round trip to meet with a, a partner and do some practice and do whatever and do some preparation and, and do some choreogra choreography. Um, but it was like an hour and a half drive there, get some dinner, practice, hour and a half drive back. That was my night was spent on one activity. And, and that's a in the grand scheme of my life, martial arts is a smaller bucket than my family, than my day job, right? My day job gets at least 40 hours of my week. That's taking a lot of time, effort, focus. The podcast is a bucket of my life that gets at least, you know, three hours on a Tuesday, you know, probably two to five, two to five more hours throughout the week, different things, right? So there's, let's say eight hours of my week on the podcast, 40 hours on the, on the, on the, uh, the day job. And then suddenly I'm taking just randomly five hours out of my night on a Monday to go do the Taekwondo thing that I hadn't been planning for, but is a small season. If you don't prioritize these things, a, they don't happen, but if you are not aware of and actively reflecting on the impact of these buckets, these areas on your life, they are the chaos that will control you. And it's more likely that you will accomplish less or accomplish it less well, poorly. Um, you know, like, like there's, there's a point where, you know, we, we've been joking around the fastest way to do nothing is to try to do everything. Well, you could try to do everything and you might just get it all done at 35%. But I, I you know, I'm, I'm working through some of my own life and, and putting this out as examples, but I'm just saying like, if you can take the time to chunk out your areas of your life, prioritize them accordingly, and then accomplish them in the right order, then you are doing para. You know, maybe maybe not, maybe not formally, right? But like, if you can take that moment, and say, okay, yeah, yeah, my volunteering gets six hours a week, my day job gets its usual, I cook dinner three nights of the week, so that's a thing I gotta do. Like, those are those things we are all kind of consciously or unconsciously doing. I think Josh and I are calling on you, the listener, and even reminding ourselves to take stock, reflect on it, and do it intentionally. If you set the priorities correctly, you set your areas up, you're going to be able to get the projects done, whatever they are, and you won't kill yourself doing it. What a what a novelty. You might actually have some room to breathe and accomplish them in, in a, a healthy way with less anxiety, less, you know, less quality issues. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, I, I think I, I think we're reinforcing each other here. But I, yeah. you know, as long no, as I'm not taking the this, opposite of everything I said. Which yeah. is, you know, All right, well, just cut what I just did, and yeah, uh, just we're having out. a live stream tonight. You know, no, it's a, it's a good yeah, it's a that's a good point. And I think a lot of this sounds overwhelming because it does. Listen, I, I get it. Like I, I fit into this camp of people 
that sometimes drive the rest of the internet crazy, which is that we are obsessed with productivity. Um, yep. And so we scream out all these practices that you should be doing, right? Um, and that then becomes another thing that most people go, that's another thing I'm not going to be able to achieve because I don't have time to do all of that. If that's you listening to this right now, throw out everything else we're saying and tomorrow, write down what's the most important thing you need to get done this week and make sure you get that thing done before you do anything else that you're not already committed to, like like meetings. Okay, I realize that. Okay, right? You're already committed to meetings or your boss needs you. Scheduled things or scheduled things. There's a lot of people not in control of their schedule. But in the time that you do have, get that one thing done. And don't tell me that that doesn't feel better than scrambling to get 15 different things kind of done. Um, like it's not that there's to me that's like that maybe that's why I'm obsessed with productivity I like checking things off I like that feeling of getting that thing done which is ironic because young Josh didn't Um, like I don't I don't know why uh, that changed in me Um, but that's the first step just prioritize and this area stuff rolls buckets whatever you want to call it um troughs i don't know definitely not troughs i'm not i'm, I'm reworking ideas um area that workshop don't need that. rework yeah. uh, we'll yeah. workshop that areas if that sounds overwhelming then just stop for a second and ask yourself what is the most important role that you play in your life right now right like don't don't break your life up into areas just start each day asking yourself what's an important area of your life and then asking yourself what's the most important thing that you do in that area of your life Right. And then just start focusing on getting that thing done first as much as you can. Right. And prioritizing. Right. That's that's the key in a lot of this. A lot of people will throw out all these techniques and all these tools. And we do during the series because there's a lot of stuff that can help you. There's a lot of stuff that's helped me. There's a lot of stuff that's helped Will. But at the end of the day, it all falls apart if you don't start off your day, your week, whatever, asking yourself, what is the most important thing that you can get done today? this week, whatever that looks like in the current environment that you're in and you focus on getting that thing done, right? If you start that, you will slowly start to get more done. The, The irony is we get more done by figuring out what not to do. Like that, that's the key. Like it's, it's figuring out what else not to do. What's the most important thing. Um, what's that book we were talking about? It was a do, more better which is a, is a more weird better title and, um yeah but like it's the concept is like doing more of better things right yeah. prioritizing better things things that matter that are more important than all the small stuff because if we don't i think we mentioned this early in the series you end up just doing a lot of small tasks like you end up just doing a lot of stuff that at the end of the day got you no closer to achieving your goals in life yeah. Like how many of us have filled out multiple Excel sheets and never felt like we got anywhere closer to where we wanted to be like that's you know? Hey, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I love Excel sheets. Don't come yeah. to my Excel. But you use it well, you know, a meal plan for your family has changed how you deal with planning meals. Right. Yeah. But like how many of us have just filled out data somewhere because it was a small task we needed to do. But at the end of the day, nobody used that. Nobody did anything with it. There was no plan for how it was going to get used. That's right? triggering, like, dude. Yep. But yeah, exactly. How many of us have done tasks like that? We end up just doing that stuff because it's easy to do. It's the small stuff to do. It's the stuff that people asked us to do. And like, I know we don't have all control over everything we do, but if we could just find that one thing each day, each week, that's most important. And we get that done step by step. We get closer yeah. to doing something that really matters to us in our lives or in the roles that we're doing. Yep. Yeah. I, I think you've nailed it, my friend. I think that's a great way to wrap this series as, as a good reminder, folks. I hope that these five episodes have um, given you ideas. This is a this is a fresh breath from the high tech podcast. We are we are definitely coming at this all a little bit differently, a different angle. Um, but we care about this stuff. That's why we decided to lead with this series, because this is the kind of thing we all have to to work at some level, maybe not all, but most people have to work. And if you have to work, you're liable to things being stressful, not going well, 
projects getting out of hand, having to work on committees, heaven for fend, right? So take these skills that we are talking through, these, these techniques, and, and make the best of them. Use the ones that work for you, which ones don't. If you watch our live stream later, it's going to be a live stream. That's the goal. But there's also going to be little subjected videos coming out of it, chunked videos coming out of uh, – our stuff on Notion on how to do this yourself, head over to affiliate.notion.so slash harness tech underscore para dashboard. That is on screen. It will be in the show notes. You can start doing this right now. You don't need our video. We're going to do the video so you can kind of follow along and, and see that after this episode. But that's the culmination of these five episodes. We're setting up this framework, these, this way of thinking, this call to action for you. And we're hopefully handing you a tool that you can use to start doing it. So head over to that link. It's on screen. It'll be in not only the live stream tonight, the videos that are coming out later this week around this. Um, and of course, forevermore. Other than that, as always, find us on the socials, High Tech Podcast or High Tech Pod. Uh, email us inbox at hightechpod.us. Website is hightechpod.us. The goal of that information is to get you in contact with us to continue building this community. We are hoping to serve and offer ideas, techniques, tools uh, that will help you increase and improve your life experience. That's the short of it all. That's why we have these, these contact methods, these tools, these ideas, these episodes. If you want to be on the podcast, you want to engage with us, you want to challenge us, slide into that inbox at hightechpod.us because that's, that's me. I will email you back. I will reply. You will get on the podcast. We will talk. We'll be able to take this forwards. So, uh, next episode is going to be episode 159. We're going to slow down a little bit. We've been on the notion track. We've been high energy, high productivity. We're going to be joined by our friend, Steve Mileto. He's been on the podcast before. We love Steve Mileto of the teaching, leading, learning K-12 podcast. Um, it's a great thing, great yeah. space. He's got s almost 700 episodes. I can't even fathom that. But we're going to step back and we're going to go old tech. It's going to be laughs. It's going to be fun. It's going to be dead Josh. Um, he yeah. did have... <laughs> what so, the hell did you have? Yeah, okay. There's two reasons to watch this episode. Okay, one, well, three. Steve Maletto is the bomb. There's no... Like, you, we'll put in the show notes of that episode. If you don't listen to his podcast, you should go listen to his podcast because um, he's amazing. Um, but two, we we see how, how, how Steve is so much better and finding cool old technology at first yes. stores than Will and I are. He got the and, coolest stuff. Like he, he had the coolest stuff during that episode. We kind of had like an informal competition of who could find the coolest stuff episode. Three, if you want to see how funny it is to watch a podcast episode where Will and Steve are normal and talking, and I'm dying of, at the time, I didn't know, you didn't um, know yet, that I yeah. had pneumonia, but I had pneumonia. Um, and only 24 hours later would be admitted to the ER. Uh, this would this is a great experience. So you should check yep. that out for those three reasons alone. That's there you go. All right, folks, this is a wrap on another week. We're empowering minds, embracing tech. Cheers.